Yeah, we're back on the Sports Max Zone, and I can tell you that within the last 15 minutes, the Caribbean has won its first medal at the World Indoor Track and Field Championship in Glasgow, Scotland. The Jamaican sprinter Akeem Blake getting bronze in the 60 meters, uh, one two finish for the USA. The fast starting Christian Coleman winning ahead of the fast closing Noah Lyles. So Coleman wins gold, Lyles gets silver, and Akeem Blake, the Jamaican, is in the bronze medal position this on day one of the three day. World Indoor Track and Field Championship in Glasgow, Scotland. We're going to talk some cricket now because the region's best women's players, well, kind of, because Hayley Matthews isn't there, well, they'll be back in action on Monday when Cricket West Indies, the CGU United Super 50 Cup, bowls off. The T20 Blaze is set to start later this month, on the 17th of March, to be precise. Uh, St. Kitts and Nevis will host the tournament across three venues, Warner Park, Connery Cricket Centre, and St. Paul Sports Complex. Today, we'll be taking a closer look at the six teams and their chances of winning the title. The Leeward's uh, cricket guru, Vernon Springer, scheduled to, sh to join us shortly. Um, let's start by looking at some of the team rosters, the defending champions in the CG Super 50, Barbados. They'll be without, as I just mentioned, their inspirational leader and West Indies captain, Haley Matthews, who is in India playing in the WPL. And uh, we'll look to the beaten finalist last year, Jamaica, who will be led by the former West Indies captain, Stefani Taylor. So here's the Barbados lineup. Kaisia Knight, who will captain the team. Aliyah Aline, Shanika Bruce, Asabi Callender, Zalia Campbell, Jamelia Connell, Nijani Cumberbatch, Erin Dean, Kelia Elliott, Ellison Gordon, Tiani Herbert Mares, Trisha Ann Holder, Kishona Knight, and uh, Alicia Cantlebury. Pretty strong Barbados team there, as we said, they are the defending champions. The Jamaica team is being led by Stefani Taylor, Rashada Williams, Janelle Henry, Natasha McLean, all West Indies players, Abigail Bryce, Vanessa Watts, Nisha Ann Waysom, there is John L. Dears, Kate Wilmot, Nicole Campbell, Shadeen Nation, also a West Indies player, Jessica Garcia, Selena White, and Kenesha Ferron the Jamaica lineup there for the CG United Super 50 Cup and the T Blaze, T20 Blaze tournaments uh, that are coming up in this month yeah. and uh, being played in St. Kitts and Nevis. So I know you get excited about women's cricket, uh, uh, Mariah, um, partly because your sister Karishma is involved and a top player for TNT and a top player for the West Indies as well. Um, we just went through the Barbados and, and Jamaica lineups, two of the stronger teams yeah. that are expected to do well in the tournament. Yeah, and Barbados will be without Haley Matthews, as you said. But Lance, I still think, despite being without their regular captain, Kaisia Knight steps in, and I think she will do a great job. They have a very strong squad on paper. And I think, you know, Barbados will put up a really good defense, even without their skipper. So nothing for the Barbados fans to be too worried about. Uh, I know the Red Force Divas, they got to St. Kitts and Nevis earlier today. Um, they're already there, you know, they're settled and everything. And they're just looking forward to see if they can snatch a title as well. I think it's a very, very open competition, Lance. And what I want to zone in on is the Red Force Divas bringing in two youngsters. I had Brianna Harricher on, on in case you missed it. She's 15 years old. But when you speak to her, Lance, you know, she's very, very mature. She's very level-headed and she's looking forward to make a mark in this tournament. They will be under the leadership of Brittany Cooper, mm -hmm. saying that there'll be no Anissa Mohammed this year. So I think a lot of the teams will be looking a bit different. But for me, it makes the competition even more exciting because youngsters, a different skipper, a lot to look forward to. Yeah. All right, we now have Vernon Springer, as we said, the Leeward Islands uh, cricket guru. Um, we just went through, Vernon, as you join us on the show, the rosters for the defending champions, Barbados and uh, Jamaica, uh, being led by uh, the experienced Stefani Taylor with quite a few West Indies players on her roster. And uh, the Barbados lineup also looks pretty strong based on the international experience of many of those, those players involved. Um, Vernon, do you consider Jamaica and uh, the Barbados teams to be among the tournament favorites? Well, I think all teams are favorites um, in this competition. Barbados without their captain, Haley Matthews, that is going to be, she's going to be surely missed because you're talking about batting. And if you have looked over the years of the Cricket West Indies women's tournament, be it the Super 50 or the T20, 
the bowling for most of the teams have been able to hold their own. What has been the major concern is the is the, the batting. So when you look at the Barbados team, they're going to be led by a new captain, Tysia Knight, who is at age 32, wicketkeeper, um, still looking to try and prove some something at this level. And she would have to really step up now and fill the shoes now of her captain, Haley Matthews. Ghana, you can't count out Ghana. You got Sherman Campbell, who's the captain, the most experienced player, some 108 ODIs for the West Indies, 125 T20s. So they'll be looking for her. Sherry and Fraser in the fast bowling lineup. I'm looking forward to see how well she will be able to shape, shape up. Jamaica on paper, um, you're talking about one of the most experienced women's cricketers in the world. Stephanie Taylor, 154 ODIs, 117 T20s, over 5,000 runs for the West Indies, seven centuries. She is no mean feat. But, and Chanel Henry, who I thought was the fastest emerging all around her coming in. So you got to keep your eye on Jama Jamaica. Natasha McLean, you know, she's a veteran. She can be able to upstage the upper cart. Trinidad and Tobago, Noah and Issa Mohammed, the experience there, leadership. But you got Brittany Cooper, who's been around for some time. So their batting will be led by a couple of youngsters there. So they'll be under some pressure. Mm. Winwood Islands and Leeward Islands, when you match up. In fact, the Windward Islands went to St. Kitts and Nevis early and participated in some warm-up games against the Leeward Islands. They played at the El Comida Willow Park in Nevis and at Warner Park under the lights. So Windward are fast emerging. They have their captain, Affie Fletcher. You know Affie Fletcher is known for taking wickets. But I want to see... She, um, she's, she's been getting some runs in some warm-up matches as well, Vernon, because um, <laughs> uh, um, she's, I think she's batting in the middle order or maybe in the top. I think she's batted four or five a couple of the matches I've seen from the scorecards from the, from the, from the Windwards. Let's, let's quickly look at the Guyana and Leeward Island squads and let's assess them. You just referenced a couple of things about those two teams, but um, let's look at the rosters there and, and, and get some more in-depth comments from you on Guyana and the Leewards. Well, I... I did mention about Ghana. I said you can't count the men. Show me and Campbell, the captain. Um, I'm looking forward to see Sherry and Fraser, young fast bowler, and even down to Shanetta Grimman. But the Leewards, the exciting news is that Tranisha Brittany Hector has returned to the lineup after missing the tournament last year. You have a new captain, Amanda Edwards, who in the tournament last year scored 189 runs with a high score of 74. Um, one of the first players to score half century for the Leeward Islands women's team. Um, she replaced Sonella Willett, who has really not come to the party as yet. But the emerging Jan Jazara Claxton, um, the young 17-year-old, she'll turn 18 in this championship on the 12th of March, is an exciting time for her, joined by some young players in Kimberly Anthony and Sherry and Moses. Now, Tanya Martin um, is a little medium-paced bowler who had a stint in England a couple of seasons ago. So she should be looking exciting. But yeah. some news here, Lance. Renisa Boyce from Trinidad and Tobago will also be part of the Leeward Islands um, set up this year. Yeah, I so, see that. Um, along, it, along with a, a, a U.S. based player, Shibani Bashkar. Yes. Can you talk to us a about of that? Seasons, was, well, Shibani has played when she was the U.S. State captain, played a couple of seasons, missed the last two seasons. So she's in. Um, you also have a Canadian international also being part of the Leeward Islands lineup. So plenty, plenty to look for. Um, at home, um, all uh, everything set. Matches at Warner Park, Connery and St. Paul's Complex. Um, as you heard, the, the teams are going to be staying at the Marriott Hotel, so everybody is really excited and ready and ready to go. And it could be a chance for us now to see some new stars um, because there's no D'Angelo Dottin. Um, I, don't, I don't know if Stephanie Taylor will be going on maybe after this World Cup, so there, there's a chance now to be able for some young players to put their hand up and say, well, hey, listen, we want to be able to carry this flag for women's cricket. Yeah. All right, you just referenced the warm-up matches that the Windwards have been playing against the Leewards because they arrived there a full week ahead, the Windwards. And uh, from what I've seen, I think they've played well in, in almost all of the matches that they've played. We're going to look now at the Trinidad and Tobago and Windward Island squads and uh, just talk a little bit, uh, little bit more about them because we've already touched on... On, on what they may have to offer. But the Trinidad and Tobago team will be led by Brittany Cooper. She's, she's captain of the team. Yeah. Uh, Karishma Ramarak, that's Mariah's sister, is the vice captain. Uh, Chanel Saw, Samara Ramnath, Janabi Joseph, Leanne Kirby, very experienced player. Kirbina Alexander, also experienced. Kanisha Isaac, Brianna Haricharan, and Katie Jazz Mitchell, Celine O'Neill, Shanice Pascal, 
Shalini Samaru and uh, Steffi Sugrim and um, uh, Mariah, you spoke with uh, Harry Turan yeah. earlier on your In Case You Missed It show and you were very impressed with how articulate and how business-like she appears to be going into the tournament. Yeah, and what stood out for me is, one, she attends a very prestigious school in Trinidad and Tobago, which is St. Augustine Girls High School. When, you know, like a young girl is attending one of those schools, you know she's brilliant. Second thing is, she plays national tennis as well, mm -hmm. Lance. So I think, you know, just those two things that I see speaks for itself. It speaks volume. Yeah. Then, you know, if you listen to the interview, which will be aired this weekend, she has plans already. Like, you know, she really wants to represent the West Indies senior team. So she goes into this uh, Super 50 and T20 with that in the back of her mind, knowing that she's gotten this opportunity to, of course, to leave her mark. So I was speaking to my sister about her, you know, pre-interview, and she was also telling me she can bat a bit. So she's a good bowler. She's very agile on the field. She can give you some runs. I think she is a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, and uh, Vernon, I reckon that um, Anissa Mohammed's retirement has uh, left a bit of a, 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 a hole for, for TNT based on how long she has been there. But the TNT squad looks solid and there are some young, talented players in there. Well, you will always... Anissa Mohammed will be surely missed in terms of leadership. It's like a Leon Johnson out of a guy in a Happy Eagles squad. Um, because Anissa Mohammed came in crucial tournaments for Trinidad and Tobago and even picking up wickets and came and batted well. Just like Afri Fletcher, who will come into this tournament with some experience. But my major concern very quickly, Lance, is in terms of preparation and how the franchises, how regional boards are treating women's cricket. And if we go back to even Guyana, Guyana had like about maybe three, four county games before they selected their team. Um, it's not everybody sounds like they're organized like a Trinidad and Tobago. The Windward Islands had a competition. In terms of the Leeward Islands, um, they didn't have a competition, so they had to muster up like 26 girls to camp in Nevis. So in terms of how we are preparing our women's cricketers, we have a lot of young players coming through, but I think there needs to be more focus on women's cricket. We have to really find some, some coaches who are going to dedicate themselves to the women's game. So even the West Indies are organizing West Indies A-team um, tours. When the girls go back to their territories, I don't think they have organized coaches who are willing to take them to that next level. And that is a problem which we have to deal with. Yeah. Um, before we look at the Windwards team, I just want to point out that I saw the departure um, function for the Jamaica team leaving for the tournament. And the Jamaica Cricket Association actually held a send-off um, function for them, which was never done before. And the general narrative coming from the Jamaica Cricket Association was that they were trying to establish some more equity with the cricket and uh, ensure that the women get as much attention as the men. So that certainly was a good sign. The Windward squad, as you mentioned, uh, Vernon, will be led by Afi Fletcher, and uh, their squad has been reasonably well prepared. They actually had a Windward Islands tournament in, I think it was Grenada, before they selected their team. So they should be Matt Sharp. Afi Fletcher captains this team. Tracy Byron, Nerissa Crafton, Malika Edward, Pearl Etienne, Ernisha Fontaine, Amia Gilbert, Janelia Glasgow, Kimon Homer, Zeta James, Kiana Joseph, Namia Marcela. There is Karina Noel and Selena Ross as well. So a couple of West Indies players or players with West Indies experience in this setup, including the 41-year-old Pearl Etienne, and which you, who you would know well, uh, uh, Vernon. And um, the Windward's team, I think from a preparation standpoint, appears, appears to me to be one of the teams that had the kind of practice and not only match practice but, but camping um, experience that should put them in good stead for this tournament. Well, you can't take your eyes off of the Windward Islands Cricket Board. They have really invested in women's cricket. In fact, they have a psychologist as part of the team and the, the, the build-up for this camp coming to St. and Nevis pretty early was an indication. In fact, the, it might have been even more interesting because Trinidad and Tobago, just because of flights, they were also due to get in early. So you'd have had a triangular tournament with Trinidad and Tobago, the Windwards, and the Leeward Islands. So in terms of preparation, Lance, you hit the nail on the head. I think out of all of the teams, the Windward Islands will be the most maybe prepared team coming out of a competition at the pre-season camp just before, and then they got to St. Kitts and Nevis a week more earlier. But you know, Lance, 
um, and all of us know Marissa, the game is played on the day and the ball is wrong. So we're looking forward mm -hmm. for some exciting, it's, it's 15 games in the CG United Super 50 and 15 more games in the T20 Blaze. And let's hope that we can be able to have some great weather and some great cricket. Yeah. All right, Bruno, we'll be talking to you during the week as the tournament starts off on Monday with the opening games. And uh, that runs through, I think, onto the 13th of March. And then the T20 Blaze starts on the 17th. But we'll pay, be paying a, a lot of attention to this uh, women's tournament, both the 50 over and the T20. So, Vernon, thanks for linking with us. And we'll be in touch again next week, I'm sure. Yeah. All right. God bless you. Yeah, looking forward thank, to thank this. Thank you, guys. Looking forward Can't to this wait. tournament, Mariah. Yeah. yeah. Hope it's going to be good and the competition will be great. And some new players as the West Indies tries to rebuild its international team, um, get some new um, promising players performing in this, in this tournament. We go to break. We'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone after...